Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, interesting times in the puzzling world. Uh, it was the Times Crossword Championship yesterday, and as uh, some of you may be aware, uh, the usual suspect didn't win for once. Um, so, my co blogger on this site, Mark Goodlift, who is the 10 time in a row Times Crossword Champion, um, he made an error. And I'll be talking about that a bit more in another video. Uh, but this video is about Sudoku, or um, well, mainly about Sudoku. We're going to take a look at the diabolical puzzle that appeared in Friday's Daily Telegraph, as usual, uh, for a weekend. Um, and, right, let's just see how we go. So, as usual, what I'll be doing is going through the puzzle and pencil marking in 3x3 three three blocks where a number can only go in exactly two positions. You can see a 4 in this block. It can't be any 4s here because of this 4. can't be a 4 here because of this 4. Um, in fact, I need to correct that. Can't be a four here because of this four. So there's a four in one of those two cells. Um, and then you can see immediately we can write in fours there, which means this one isn't valid. Let's uh, get rid of that and replace it with that one. Um, so that's our first number. Now, what can we do more? Yes, we can make two little nines down here, look, because of this nine and this nine. And that means there must be a nine here, because this nine prevents there from being a nine in this cell. Uh, so we write that nine in. There must be a nine here now, because of this nine preventing there from being a nine in this cell. There must be a nine here. In fact, we're doing quite well with nines already. We can pencil mark some nines down there. Okay. twos into this 3 by 3 block, continue with the twos up there, eights into these two positions because of this eight here and this eight here, and now this cell must contain an eight. Uh, just checking the eights, so we've got Five, six, and seven up here. So this can only be a six or a seven. Can pencil mark fives in there like that. Oh, and in fact, this seven here is forcing this to be a seven, isn't it? So let's put that in. Pencil mark the sixes into these two cells. Ones can be pencil marked over here, look. This has to be a seven. I suspect that Mark's going to be uh, not only um, not vlogging today because of his uh, his annoyance about yesterday, but he's also off to Prague today for the World Sudoku Championship, which starts this week. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to do some videos talking about the puzzles that have appeared actually in the World Championship over the next few days, so if you are interested in that sort of thing, do keep an eye on the channel. Uh, right, what can we do next? So you can see one of these squares here has to be a 4, just by elimination, we've got 5, 6 here, so we need to put a 4 in the block. Pencil mark 3's, look over here, 3's down here, 1's over here, because of this one here, and there's a one in this cell, so we can actually, this must be a one, this must be a four. That resolves the four and the two over on this side of the grid. Starting to make a bit of progress. I suppose I should look at the middle row. What do we need here? We need a one, a four, and a seven. Right, so this has to be a one. Let's go like that. Two, five, seven, eight. Ah, this is just a 2 in this cell. It's the only um, number that can actually validly go in this cell here. It's called a naked single. Sometimes it's difficult to spot. But I was working on the rows and columns where we already had a lot of given digits. So that's how I looked at row number 2 there. Um, so let's have a look down. 3, 4, 6, 9. So you can see this square here has to be a 3 or a 6. Six, nine. Can't see anything else there though. Uh, 
far. Now where can we place an 8 in row 2? There can't be an 8 here, and there can't be an 8 here. So this, this is the 8. So we've now got 5 and 7 locked into these two cells. I am tempted to pencil mark that. Now it's not strictly in accordance with my notation, but on a diabolical rated puzzle, sometimes we do need to keep track of these cells that can only contain two digits. Now, with a, if we were solving in pencil, it would be very easy to do that. Um, but most Sudoku software doesn't allow you to make different sorts of pencil marks, so we sort of have to improvise a little bit when we're working on the computer. Um, now, 136 down column 3. Um, can't see how to resolve that. What else do we need here? Seven. Ah, oh, we have a seven over here, so that does resolve that. That must be this way round. Three, three. Pencil mark threes into those two positions. Sevens. I think we can go further with the sevens. Two, six, eight down the right hand column here. Now you can see this eight means that the eight's either here or here, but I don't think we can we can tell which way round it goes. Um, so, what else can we do here? This cell's quite restricted. You can see we've got a lot of different numbers. If we look, if we compare the contents of row seven here and column seven, I think all that's left is a two and a five. Ah, this. Is, this same sort of thing going along row row one here. So, two, five, yeah, this is a two and a five as well. Okay, so now we've effectively got six numbers in column seven here because the two five pair means that the open positions can't contain the numbers two and five, obviously. So we're looking at seven, eight, and nine into the open position. So let's just take a look. I'm going to notate. So this is 8, 9, so this can actually be a 7, 8 or 9, this square. Right, now, but what can we do? Hmm. We have to ask ourselves the question in, in this sort of situation. Why, why might it be important that the numbers 2 and 5 are not appearing in this column? It feels like quite powerful spot, but I'm not quite seeing how we can use it. I'm just going to stare at the grid for a minute. Hmm. I wonder, I'm just going to... Let's just try and make a note of where fives can go, because you can see in this block here, now we've eliminated a 5 from this square. Where can the 5s go now in this 3x3 three three block? You can see obviously that this could be a 5, this cell here. There's no 5s down here, there's no 5 here, there's no 5 here, and there's no 5 here. So 5s can only go now in two positions in this 3x3 three three block. So, having about, where can a 5 go in column 4? It can't go here. So in column 4, a 5 can go here or here only. And in column There's something going on, there's some sort of chain, I think, going on with the fives here. Let's just try and work this through logically. So, if this is a five, we know this will be a five. And if this is a five, this will have to be a five, because if this cannot be a five, this will be a five here, in this square. So we've worked out, if this is, there won't be a five here, if there's a 5 here, sorry, there won't be a 5 here, and there will be a 5 here. 
So if this is a 5, this will be a 5. And if this is not a 5, this will be a 5. So there cannot be a 5 in either this position or this position. I think that's right. So just to try, I'll, sorry, I know I'm being a little bit inarticulate, but I'm trying to think as I'm staring at the screen here. It's not the most, uh, it's not the most elegant way of doing explaining one's thought process. But what I think I've got to is, if this is a five, you can see that that forces this cell to be a five, which prevents this cell from being a five. If this is prevented, prevented from being a five, there's only one candidate for five now in column four, that's this cell. So we know that there is a link between the value of five here and the value of five here. So the interesting thing about that is if we look at row two of the grid, we know that if this is not a five, there's only one other position a five can go, and that's in this cell. So I know that whether this is a five or not, these three cells here are fundamentally affected. None of them can contain a five because the five will either be here or it will be here. Now that might be helpful because let's now consider what can go in these three cells, knowing they cannot contain a five. So you can see if we look at uh, row four of the grid, the open numbers are only two, six and eight now. This is cannot be an eight. So this has to be now a two or a six. And along here, we've got three, five, and six. Well, this could only be three or six now. Right, now you may notice by the fact that the uh, that my picture has gone somewhat darker that I've had a bit of a hiatus on the puzzle. I carried on looking at it um, for about 10 minutes earlier, and then I've had to come back to it um, now um, and stare at it for a bit longer. And I have to admit, I was not getting anywhere um, so what I've actually had to do to make progress and to spot the next step is I've had to put it into some different software that allowed me to colour the candidates. Uh, I don't like doing this because you can't colour the candidates or you can't efficiently colour the candidates in any sort of competition type scenario. Um, but here I found it very hard to spot what was going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now um, in this software, which is called Hadoku. It's got a nice, um, nice user interface actually. What this puzzle looks like if we fill in all the candidates for the open cells that we've already got there, and we also highlight the number six. Now, this is, believe it or not, uh, a way. I'm sure there are different ways of set, uh, solving the puzzle. In fact, if I hit um, show me how to solve it on on this software, it comes up with some bizarre chain of things that uh, certainly I didn't find very logically uh, intuitive at all. So I've disregarded that and stared it a bit longer and come up with a different way to show you. Um, so the first thing to note, if we look at look at the pattern of sixes here, is that there are several uh, rows in particular that only really contain a couple of places a six can go, two or three places. And there's also a strange arrangement going on in the bottom part of the grid here with this 3-8 combination. So you can see here 3-8, 3-6, 8, this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell. Now if you stare at these cells for a while, it becomes apparent that actually this cell here is restricted. So I'd ask you to think about how this cell might be restricted now. Pause the video if you need to. But the thing we might notice is what happens if this cell takes a 6. Now, if this cell takes a 6, strange things happen. Firstly, these two cells become a 3-8 pair. Now, that has an effect on this cell. This cell can only now be 2 and 5. But if this cell is 2 and 5, 
and this cell is 2 and 5, this cell here has to be a 6. But we've already said that we've made this a 6 in order to start this chain off. So this is impossible. This cell here cannot contain a 6. OK, we've managed to do it now. Um, and now, once we've done this, this gives us a way of resolving the puzzle, because now we can look at the interplay of sixes uh, around the grid, because there is, um, believe it or not, a sort of way of chaining these sixes around. And to do that, I'm going to, I probably have to add some highlighting, or oh, maybe it'll let me do it actually. Let me try and see if I can highlight the right cells here. So uh, choose a color for cell. There we go. So if I highlight this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell. So now let's think about this arrangement. Now, it should be fairly clear, obviously, if this is a 6, this cannot contain a 6. All right? So if this is a 6, there's no 6 here. What if this isn't a 6? If this isn't a 6, the only place a 6 can now go in row 3 is here. So this is going to be a 6. Now, if this is a 6, this is not a 6 in this square. Now look at row 7. If there's no 6 here, there must be a 6 here. So either way, there's either going to be a 6 here, or there's going to be a 6 here. Therefore, either way round, there cannot be a 6 here. And that is the key, believe it or not, to solving the puzzle. So let's go back to the earlier version. So now we're back on the earlier version, and we've proved to ourselves this cell here has to be a 3. Now, does that help? And you can see it's, all, it's already helping. It forces a 3 into this position. That forces a 3 into this position. And from here on out, we're sort of really starting to make reasonable progress. That unwinds this 7, 8, 9 thing down this di down column 7 of the grid and all of a sudden we get a flurry of numbers and from here on, as I say, it becomes relatively doable. 7 and 5 unwind like that, etc. So this was the key to solving the puzzle. Now I admit that I certainly didn't solve this in one sitting and I needed computer aid in terms of colouring. So this is um, pretty monstrous actually. Uh, I have to say, I'm not... I'm, I'm, worried as well that I've missed something uh, more elegant than this so please do in the comments if you spot something that you think I should have seen do let me know I'm always keen to improve my own solving as well but for those of you who studied the puzzle and for the, whom this was helpful I'm very pleased and we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content we appreciate that